Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. It's so good to see all of you. Hi, everyone. Are you guys excited for today's lesson? Great. We just want to welcome those who are new to this video. Thank you for joining us. Today, we have Teacher Cannon going over lesson 34. Lesson 34 is about Abram and Lot. Abram and Lot separated from each other. Lot chose the best land near Sodom. Teacher Candy has a wonderful lesson prepared for all of you. So make sure you grab your Bibles and your worksheets. If you don't have your worksheets yet, go on our church app. Under Kids Corner, you'll find a button called Resources. Click on that and you'll find your grade. But before we start our lesson, we always have worship. So make sure you get up and dance and sing as loud as you can. Enjoy your lesson. Just want to let you know that we love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. And we're always praying for you. God bless you all and have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye.
Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a good morning, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. And I'm really excited about our lesson on Abram and Lot and making good choices, good choices that pre uh, please the Lord. But before we do that, let's start in prayer, okay? We always start in prayer before we read the Bible, right? Our dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this Sunday morning, Lord. I thank you for the boys and girls that are here with us, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that um, you help us to just um, um, be quiet and still and be able to listen to your word and to learn, Lord, and learn about making good choices, the right choices that please you, Lord. And we just ask these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we are studying in the book of Genesis. And do you remember what you studied last week? Abraham had faith and trusted in the Lord, right? And he obeyed God because God told him to move. He said, leave your family, leave the land that you know, and go where I tell you. So, Abraham did, didn't he? Okay, so we learned last week how God called Abram to leave his father's house and his family and move to a different land. This would have been a long journey, but Abram trusted God and left his home without knowing where God was leading him. Do you remember who went with Abram? It was his wife, right? Sarai, do you remember that, her name? And his nephew. And what was his nephew's name? Lot, right. So he traveled with his servants and his animals and his wife and his nephew. God gave Abram some great promises too. But even though Abram didn't get to see all those promises come true, he still trusted God to keep every one of them. Abram had faith in God. He knew he could trust God to do what he said he would do. Isn't that a good feeling to know that we can trust God and when he makes a promise, he never breaks it, ever. That's not God's character. So, we're going to start off today's lesson, and we're going to read Genesis 13, chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. And it says, Lot also who went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. So, what did both Abram and Lot own? We just read it in the Bible. They had flocks and herds and tents. Flocks would be their sheep, and they usually had a lot of sheep. And herds would be their cattle or cows, and they had a lot of those. And tents. Now, back then, they lived in tents, so they weren't like little tents we use for camping. They were big tents that they lived in. They set them up like a house, and then when they moved, they tore them down and packed them up, and away they went. What did it say they could not do together? It said they could not dwell together. Do you know what dwell means? It means they couldn't live together. They couldn't stay in the same place together. Abram and Lot had a lot of things, both of them. They owned flocks of sheep and herds of goats. I said cows. I'm sorry, boys and girls. It's goats. It's not cows. They had herds of goats and other animals. They also had many servants and tents. There were so many things and so many animals that there just wasn't room for all of them to stay in one place together. Animals like sheep and goats need to have grass and water, right? 
grass is what they eat and they have to have water to drink. But what will happen if there are too many animals eating in the same place? That's right, they'll eat up all the grass and they'll drink up all the water. So after a while, all the good grass was eaten and there wasn't enough water for all their animals to drink. Pretty soon, Abram's servants started fighting with Lot's servants. Oh no, how could they solve such a big problem? What should they do? Do you have any ideas? Well, maybe they shouldn't live together, right? Well, Abram didn't want to have any fighting, so he said they should spread out and separate from each other. I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of room here today, boys and girls. This is Abram, and he stayed where God led him. He did what God told him. And this is Lot, and Lot moved to the prettiest land near Sodom. And we're going to learn about Sodom. Abram let Lot choose the land he wanted first. If Lot went to the left, Abram would go to the right. If Lot went to the right, Abram would go to the left. That way they would all have enough food and water for their animals and the fighting would stop. Lot looked over the land and saw an area and he said it looked beautiful. And it was like a beautiful garden with plenty of water. So Lot chose to go there. Lot decided to go that way because it looked so pretty. Kind of like choosing a present that is nicely wrapped. But you know what? Just because a present's nicely wrapped doesn't mean the inside's pretty, right? What if you choose a really pretty package and then you open it and it's a toy that's broken inside? It's all in pieces. Well, that's no fun, is it? But you picked it because the outside was pretty, but the inside wasn't. So it wasn't a good thing, was it? So let's talk about the places where Abram and Lot chose to live. Abram chose to stay in the land, land of Canaan, where God wanted him to go. Canaan was the land that God promised to Abram. Abram worshipped and trusted God, so he stayed there. How did the Lot decide where he was going to live? What made him choose his land? Right, he thought it looked pretty. Lot chose to go to the beautiful land because it looked all nice and green. But there was a problem. The land was right by a city called Sodom. The Bible says that the people of Sodom were wicked and great sinners against God. Uh-oh. Do you think that turned out to be the best choice for Lot and his family to live there? I don't think so either. Lot moved his family near the city of Sodom. And while he was there, a big battle started. There were four kings who won the fight. So they went to the city and stole all kinds of things and captured all the people, including Lot and his family. This is terrible. Poor Lot was captured by the enemy. But guess what? Abram came to the rescue. Yes, Abram heard that his nephew was captured and Abram had 318 servants and they were trained to fight. They were like soldiers. So they went at night and they were very quiet and then they attacked the four kings and rescued Lot and all the people who were captured and brought them back safely. Wow, it's a good thing Abram came to the rescue. Lot made a bad choice. And he chose to move where the land looked best. He didn't take time to think about what would be best for his family. Instead, he chose to move to the land near the wicked city of Sodom because it looked good. But that led to big problems like getting captured. Abram made a good choice though. He believed that God is faithful and always keeps his promises. He didn't 
need to try and get what seemed like the best land for himself, Abram trusted to give him all that he needed. We all make choices every day, big important ones and little ones. But whatever we choose, we need to trust God to help us because sometimes the things that look the nicest or seem the best may not be that good. So we need to remember to make the choices that we think will please God. So now you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna read our story. Do you guys remember Jesse and Justin? And what were they doing last time? Jesse's aunt and uncle trusted God to show them where to move. And they ended up moving into the same neighborhood with Jesse and Justin. Jeremy trusted God to help him find new friends. And it looks like he and Justin will get along really well. What do you suppose will happen in today's story? Let's read and find out. Ding dong! Justin, see who's at the door, please, Justin's mom shouted. She was in the kitchen taking fresh, hot cookies out of the oven. It's Matt, he called back to his mom as he opened the door. Hi, Justin, said Matt. I guess I'm supposed to be over here today. My mom said so. Oh, okay, said Justin. He led the way to the kitchen. Well, hello there, Matt, Mom greeted him. Hi, Matt replied as he gazed at the cookies on the counter. Can I have one of those, please? Not right now, maybe later, okay? I have to make sure I've got enough, Mom explained. Let's go play trucks in the sandbox, Matt suggested, Justin. All right, but I'm sure hungry for a cookie. Matt hinted, hoping Justin's mom would give him one, but she didn't even hear him. She was too busy counting all the cookies. 32, 33, 34. I'll call you in for lunch in a little bit, she said as the boys went out the back door. Justin opened up the sandbox and stepped in. The two boys played with dump trucks until mom called from the kitchen window. Come in for lunch, boys. Hey, maybe we can have cookies for lunch, said Matt as they went inside. While the boys ate their sandwiches, Justin's mom bustled around the kitchen, putting cookie dough on pans and sliding, in the t sliding them into the oven. The whole countertop was piled with cookies. How come you're making so many cookies, Mom asked Justin. He had never seen so many cookies before. Oh, these are for the bake sale at church. Just then they heard Ellie's tiny voice calling from her room. Mommy, up now. Mom set the timer on the oven, then went to get Ellie up from her nap. Hey, Matt whispered, now's our chance. Huh, said Justin, what do you mean? Now we can grab some cookies while your mom is gone, Matt explained. But she said they were for the bake sale, Justin argued. Besides, we need to ask before we take a cookie. She said we could have some later, Matt said as he got up and tiptoed over to the counter. He reached toward a pile of chocolate chip cookies. Buzz! The oven timer made Matt jump. Whoa, that scared me, he laughed. Justin didn't laugh. He stared hard at Matt as he finished eating his banana. Justin's mom hurried into the room to turn off the buzzer and grab the cookies out of the oven. Phew, that's the last of them. Finally, she said. Justin put his dishes in the sink and headed out the back door. Come on, Matt. Let's go back outside, he said. He grabbed a ball and bounced it on the back sidewalk, waiting for Matt to come out. After a while, Matt came bounding out the back door, shouting, Hey, Justin, you can come and get some cookies now. Really? Great! Justin went inside, expecting to see his mom with a plate of cookies for them, but his mom wasn't even in the kitchen. Did my mom say we could have some cookies? He asked Matt, uh, yeah, sure she did. 
said Matt as he grabbed a cookie and stuffed the whole thing in his mouth. Justin thought for a moment. Something didn't seem right. Maybe he should go find his mom and ask. On the other hand, Matt said she told him it was okay. Mom was really busy today and he didn't want to bother her. Besides, the cookies looked so good. And there were so many of them, she probably didn't need them all. Here, Matt held out a warm, gooey chocolate chip cookie to Justin. Justin took it and bit into it. Mmm. The cookie practically melted in his mouth. The boy stood by the cookies, munching one after another. Justin! They turned to see Mom standing in the doorway with a big frown on her face. What do you think you're doing? She said in an angry voice. Suddenly, the cookie Justin was eating didn't taste so good anymore. Matt said you told him we could have some cookies, he said. I said no such thing. I told you these are for the bake sale. I have to have exactly 12 dozen cookies, she said. Now I don't have enough. Justin, I want you to go to your room and Matt, go into the living room and stay there until I tell you. I have to count these again. Justin waited in his room for a long time. Finally, his dad walked in with a serious face. Justin felt awful. He told his dad what had happened. He didn't mean to disobey. Justin knew that he should have asked mom to make sure it was okay to have a cookie. But they looked so good. And if he had asked mom, she might have said no. Instead, he chose to take some. And that was the wrong choice to make, wasn't it? Asked dad. Yes, sir, said Justin. But they look so good. Well, first of all, I think you need to apologize to your mom, dad said. And since she has to take extra time to make another batch of cookies, you will need to help her by taking care of some extra chores around the house. Oh, and no more cookies either. Okay, Justin replied. He didn't even want more cookies. He felt sick to his stomach. Justin trudged downstairs. He walked past Matt, who was holding his stomach. He wasn't feeling too well either. Matt sat in the kitchen watching Ellie. That was his job so Justin's mom could make more cookie dough. Justin went over to his mom and told her he was really sorry. She forgave him and gave him a hug. Then Justin grabbed the feather duster and started dusting the shelves in the living room. Mom didn't have time to dust and sweep today. She had to get more cookies baked in a hurry so she could get them to the bake sale on time. It took Justin a long time to finish dusting everything and sweeping the floor. Matt's mom came and picked him up before they got a chance to play trucks again. Later that evening, Justin's mom came home from the bake sale. She gave Justin a hug and said, Thank you for your help with the chores. The house looks very nice. Then she took out a brown paper bag with something big and round in it. I even brought you something from the bake sale, she said, and handed the bag to Justin. Justin opened the bag carefully. He reached into the bag and pulled out a giant chocolate chip cookie. Mom and Dad laughed as Justin made a face and said, No, thank you. I think I've had enough cookies for one day. The cookies looked and smelled so good. It was hard for Justin to decide what to do. But he chose to go ahead and eat some. He didn't stop to think about what would be a better choice. Justin would have been better off if he had obeyed his mom and stayed away from the cookies, right? That's kind of like what we learned from the Bible today when Lot decided to choose the land because it looked so nice. He ended up living next to a wicked city and getting captured but Abram chose to obey God and stay in the place where God had led him. Just like Abram and Lot, we face decisions every day about what we will say and do. 
we need to be careful about how we make these decisions. When we choose things just because they look good or seem more fun, we can get into trouble like Lot did. So whenever you have a choice to make, think about what God would want you to do and ask God to help you make the right choice. You know, he, we pray to him and we say, Dear Lord, help me to do the right thing. And he will help us every time. He loves us that much. Okay, do you guys remember your memory verse? It's a long one this time, isn't it? Oof. Are you ready? Let's try and go over this, okay? Can you see this? Now the Lord, that's a crown, had said, he's talking, unto Abram. Get thee unto a land, see the land, that I will show you. She's showing her artwork. And I will make of thee, he's making his bed, and I will make of thee a great people. See all the people? And I will bless thee. See, he's blessing them with a gift. Sorry, I'm out of room. And make thy name great. See how big his name is? And thou shalt be a blessing. And that's Genesis 12, 1 and 2. We're going to go over that again. So you, every week we're going to go over it so you can memorize it. Okay. So I think that's it, boys and girls. We went over our lesson about making good choices. Choices that will please God. Let's try and remember that every day. And I'm so happy I got to spend this time with you. And I just pray you're all doing well. And let's just thank the Lord for this time we had together, okay? Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the boys and girls here today, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that um, this study helps them to remember to make the right choices, Lord. Choices that are pleasing to you, Lord. And to remember that if... We don't know what choice to make. We can pray to you, Lord, and you will help us make the right one, Lord. And I thank you so much for this time we've had together, Lord, and, and for your word and how much you love us, Lord. And we just thank you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, have a great Sunday and a good week, okay? God bless you.